Hey everyone, welcome to the new quick tip tutorial. This time I want to show you how you can use simple low poly modeling techniques and enhance them using few modifiers here and there to get a really nice stylized result for your illustration. So let's get right to it and I want to create some kind of a portal uh, made out of a stone blocks with a little bit of a wavy vortex in the middle or something. We'll see where it goes. Um, so first of all, I'd like to define a structure uh, for a portal door. I want it to be arched. So let's start with the plane and I will press shift A and add a plane here. Now let's go into the edit mode and we'll rotate it on the X axis. So I'll press R, then X and 90 degrees. And let's now press G, then Z and 1 to move it one meter up. And now we can select these two vertices at the top and press G, then Z and move them up like this. And we can now bevel them. So let's press Ctrl B, then V to enable vertex beveling. And let's increase the number of segments with the mouse wheel to something like this. And let's put those two in the middle really close and I want to merge them right now. So let's drag a selection around those, press M and merge at center. And now we have a nice arch there. And let's now go to the edge select by pressing two, select this bottom edge, press X and delete. Now select all, press E, then Y and extrude towards the back like this. And now we can select all by pressing A, press Alt E and extrude faces along normals. Let's press S for even scaling and let's leave it like this. So this is how I would usually approach any low poly illustration. And now I want to add a little bit of detail. I want really visible stone blocks there. So we can reuse some geometry here. And with this other loop selected, we can just press Shift D to duplicate, or right click to release and now press P and click selection to separate the selection. Now I will tab out, select this new separated object and tab back in. And let's chop this up a little bit. So I will press Ctrl R and create two new loops right here and on the other side as well. And let's increase the number of cuts with the mouse wheel and right click to release. Okay, now I will just select some of these faces. So let's select this one here, these two, maybe here and yeah these two will be fine and the bottom one right here so have a look and select these faces similarly and let's now press ctrl i to invert x and delete faces and let's select all of those press s and y to scale them on the y-axis and now i want to move them a little bit further away from the surface here and the great tool to use for this is scaling along normals. So let's press Alt S to scale along normals and move them all like this. And now press Alt E, extrude faces along normals and extrude them inside like that. And these will be our stone blocks. And maybe I made it a little bit too large here. So let's select all. Press S and Y and scale it down a little bit maybe. And of course you can again use that scaling along normals to fix this. So Alt S and scale it down a bit. So this is our low poly structure and now let's give it some more detail. And I really like to use bevel for that. So let's just press 1 for vertex select. Select some of these vertices. Press Ctrl B then V and just bevel with one segment. So reduce the number with the mouse wheel and release like this. And you can do one on the other side as well and press G twice on any vertex to slide it up to create these nice kind of cuts. And we can go around and make bevels like this. So for example, you can do bevel for the edge as well and then just slide one vertex up to create this kind of a slope. So let's just continue now and bevel these parts however you like. You can follow my lead or you can find your own details you want to add. Sometimes you can bevel corner like this and then press Ctrl T to triangulate in the middle and then, you know, slide this. Okay, I think I'm starting to like this. Um, this can be a little bit tedious at times, but if you get used to it, 
it really doesn't take so much time to bevel these details and what's best that they are really you know custom made you really influence how the final model looks and now let's give some attention to that original art as well so let's select that one tab in and we'll do something similar here so Okay, we don't need to overdo it, so let's just now place um, something underneath and I will press Shift A and add a plane here, scale it on the x-axis, extrude down and let's select all and press Shift N to recalculate normals in case they're flipped and we can now, you know, add some more geometry to that with loops and bevel some of those as well. Okay, I think this looks quite all right and it's very simple and effective technique, but how can you take this one step further when you, for example, need your illustration to be smooth and stylized at the same time, but you don't have time, you know, to do any kind of advanced textures or stuff like that. And you can help yourselves by using a few simple modifiers. So here, for example, I want to use bevel modifier to give this a little bit more smooth look but maintain that stylized toy-like feel at the same time. So let's select one of these objects, go to the modifiers and let's add a bevel modifier and we can increase number of segments to two and right click shade smooth. And this already looks a little bit better. Um, you can maybe reduce the amount and let's see the wireframe overlay here. Okay, something like this. And we can go to the shading and click harden normals and of course we need to go to the object data properties normals and enable auto smooth for the harden normals to work and now this looks much better you have that nice stylized smooth look where this looks like it's made out of plastic or something like it's a toy or some i don't know like wargaming prop um, i really like this style and it's really easy to make you basically follow um, you know all the low poly techniques that you would do for a flat shaded scene but then in the end you know you can apply all kinds of bevel modifiers like this to get the smooth result so let's now just transfer this modifier to the other objects as well so let's select those with the beveled one as last and press ctrl n and link modifiers and of course we'll need to go to the object data properties and by holding alt we can enable auto smooth there as well and increase the angle to 180 degrees and now the one thing that's left i want to do some kind of pathway here in the middle some wavy structure like so it looks like a portal to another dimension or something so let's start with the plane again i will press shift a add a plane now tab in rx 90 degrees let's confirm this and let's press gz1 so this is pretty similar than before now I will toggle X-ray by holding Z and let's look from the front, press G then Z and move this up. Okay, like this. And now we want to subdivide this. I want to use some displacement on it. So let's, let's create two new loops here in the middle and one here. And now let's just select all, right click and subdivide a few times. You can of course increase the subdivisions here but um, this is more exponential when you repeatedly click it. So I think I want this pretty dense because I want the smooth result. So right now we can tab out, press G then Y and move this object towards the middle. And let's go to the modifiers and let's add displacement. So where are you displacement? Here it is. And now we'll create a new displacement texture. And let's click this little button here. So we go to the texture settings right there and let's switch this to wood um, this might be a little bit counterintuitive but it's a great texture um, for this you will see and we can switch the pattern to rings or ring noise and um, we'll see how that looks so let's go back to the modifier and let's reduce the strength like this um, this looks pretty great so far 
and let's play let's play with the size a little bit here and the turbulence amount okay i really like this um, but i want this to be more in the middle and we can use some object texture coordinates to fix that so let's press shift a and let's add an empty axis that's the gizmo right here we'll leave it at that and now go back to the modifier and let's switch the coordinates from local to object and let's pick that empty right here let's find it or maybe we can just pick it from the list since there is not much going on here so let's pick that empty and now you can select it press g z and move it up and you are moving these texture coordinates right here you can even scale it for some effects um, this is great for animation for example if you want to move this around or make it a little bit more dynamic um, you can animate these texture coordinates by animating this empty as well so let's toggle the x-ray and i will shade smooth this one here and let's add a solidify modifier so we can so we can give it some transmissive material later and let's look from the side and maybe let's increase the thickness of this okay looking good so far maybe we can push it down a tiny bit okay so um that's the very easy stylized portal door um you can use for your illustration or you know game icon or whatever you have so um just played it i will probably add some more things like i want to add some some stones around here some steps maybe a plant or something I will fast forward so you can see how I can enhance the scene and set up the lighting and everything. You can then use the YouTube player, you know, to slow down the parts you want to explore. Um, the shortcuts are active right here. So I will now get to this and see you on the other side.
So that's the stylized portal for you. I just basically added some tiles and some plants around, you know, and then set up some lighting. Um, if you want to achieve a similar effect on this portal here, um, the material basically has only the transmission and transmission roughness. So nothing too crazy here. Um, it helps to add some point light behind that portal. And as you can maybe see, I've added little emission strip down here um, this is just basically plain with some emission material on it so it's a lid from from the bottom so that's it um, if you want to learn more detail more in depth things like this illustration like this um, go ahead and check out my website polygonrunway.com you can find the link in the description there are courses for you to check out um, the latest one on the characters and hard surface modeling and if you're new to the channel and you like to see content like this in the future please hit that subscribe button and the bell button so you get notified when i release something new thank you all for watching and have a wonderful day